Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm talking about books as usual, though I think I will do a top 10 uh, favorite movies of last year as well. So there'll be some crossing of streams or introducing of a new stream into the mainstream, a channel, I don't know. Uh, this is my top 25, but probably 26. Um, books uh, that are backlisted. I already have a top 10 um, books published in 2022, but I read predominantly, maybe not as much last year, but I usually read a lot more backlisted books than recent reads uh, or recently released. And so this I just need more space for. I read 470 books, um, about 500 including DNFs, and so I just figure that where most people do top tens, I just need more space because I've read more books. Um, and so I'm going to do a top 25 plus one. Uh, I'm going to go through these pretty quick because I want the video to be fairly <laughs> fast. The top 10 took 25 minutes because I explained everything uh, about each one, why I liked it, and sort of the premise and whatnot. I don't think I'll be able to do this for this. This is more like a an award ceremony, but all of them are equally excellent and all of them uh, made it through the nomination process to be uh, winning this particular award. So uh, backlist books, also behind me I've removed them for a shot that I'll attempt with my camera later. So you might even, if you're savvy, be able to tell which books these are. The first book I want to point out is Women in Clothes. And I'll have, as usual, the information below and the picture beside me so I don't get caught up in trying to pronounce people's names incorrectly or uh, failing to list translations and narrators and things like that. Uh, but Women in Clothes was phenomenal. Definitely one of the best books. It's unusual, unconventional. It is completely a delight. Tomb of Sand. I think this has been kind of making the rounds. I read this with the uh, Hardcover Hearts group. Fantastic group to read stuff with. There was a people in there that were um, familiar with uh, the culture far more than me and added so much to the reading experience. And even without that, I was enjoying the book immensely. J.R., phenomenal book. Read this with Mark Nash. Uh, I believe he liked the recognitions quite a bit more, but this was my first a uh, book by Gaddis, and I absolutely adored it. It was challenging to get through. Another unconventional read, but uh, absolutely fantastic, an experience that has stuck with me. Next, The Tomb Guardians, huh, just a phenomenal book. Uh, I think I heard about this, uh, I heard about this on um, uh, Bite Size Book Chats, actually. Somebody had talked about that and it was just a phenomenal book. House of Leaves, what more needs to be said? Completely enthralling experience. Probably put like a hundred hours or something into reading that book. I have annotations everywhere. It has been <laughs> color-coded and collated and uh, it, it's just a phenomenal reading experience for somebody like me. I could see some other people not liking it at all, but I just descended right into its depths. Uh, fake Accounts, Phenomenal book. I think it is so, so underrated. Uh, I think a lot of people are just simply annoyed by the protagonist, but it that is what it is supposed to be doing. It's such an excellent commentary on current times. It's satirical, tongue-in-cheek, but also very real and reflective of what is happening in online spaces at the moment, and just wickedly bitingly funny. Lost Children Archive, I read this with uh, Sina from Beating Around the Books, and I read it with um, Courtney Ferreter, and this was just a phenomenal book, uh, especially, by the way, reading it with audio, because on their trip they take audio samples, and there's different mixes and certain mixed media things uh, about this book that make it pretty unconventional. And the audio experience attempts to bring some of those components into it. So I highly recommend, if you can, reading the book along with the audiobook as well. Um, yeah, phenomenal experience. 
From Hell, read this with Shelley Swearingen, I liked it a lot more than her. Definitely my favorite Alan Moore story, which is saying something, by a country mile. By a country mile. It is incredible. Uh, an Apprenticeship or a Book of Pleasures, my first Lispector experience, yes. I liked it much more than uh, The Passion according to GH, but I did like that one as well. Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies, again, mm, slightly unconventional, perfect prose basically for me, what I like anyway. Excellent story, the character archetypes, again, is something that is just like not different, but executed perfectly. I cannot wait to see what this author does uh, next. Ada, a book that uh, was recommended by Mark Nash, uh, phenomenal book. It is recontextualizing, or maybe contextualizing, um, the uh, bomber in 9-11, how he came to possibly feel the way he does, why he does the things, and contextualizes the culture. Uh, it manages to condemn Western culture and being uh, exceptionally in its craft, showing the differences, but the lack of humanity and derision towards an empathetic character. The duality is just incredible, basically. The Art of Losing, uh, one of my favorite books of the year, well, obviously. I, it is the a family's multi-generational story from the conflict in Algeria where they were dispossessed and they're, they're residing in France, but there's like a mystery component at the very beginning where you're not sure who the narrator is, why they're kind of telling this story. There's like all these narrative drops about like this mystery component of somebody allegedly maybe going back to Algeria, why that is. Uh, it's just phenomenal. You learn a lot, at least I did, about the situation. The characters are absolutely compelling. It was a, a perfect book for me. A Suitable Boy, another perfect book. Uh, Partition in India, modern classic. I don't think much needs to be said about it. I resonated with everything about it. Another kind of perfect reading experience for me. The Luminaries read this with the Up to No Good book club, which I'll put below. Uh, a really phenomenal reading experience. We checked in a couple times, I think twice, uh, regarding it. I still haven't watched the Prime Video TV series adaptation, but Boy, that was an excellent mystery, the complexity of the plot and uh, the characterization and just all of the crap that went into that book is staggering. The Middlesex, a recommendation from uh, Shelley Swearingen, I saw it on her channels and it prompted me to take the plunge. Phenomenal historical fiction, excellent. Um, the character makes everything. It's one of those characters where they could be describing absolutely everything and you would just be completely on board. Uh, Multi-generational, inclusive of uh, queer culture and like a very unique experience that I've never read about even. Satan Tango is, yeah, a lot have been said about it. I think it was like a Booker winner or something, right? Fantastic book. Again, the complexity of the plot, themes, characters, but really the way that it sets up um, allegory and metaphors in order to <laughs> destroy them basically so that it's one of those books where like nobody learned anything but a lot happened and the plot is circuitous it makes like a closed loop it makes you think about many different components excellently rendered another perfect book magic mountain <laughs> another perfect book <laughs> um read this with uh, Greg at another bibliophile reads and the group Scally Dandling about the book also um, headed it I believe and there was a few people in there again just a really pleasant experience it was one of the times I let a book kind of wash over me in audiobook format but again staggering in its communication predominantly of theme and character uh, the plot not that much physically happens in the book but again sort of a transcendent experience through all of that just yeah what it communicates about and encapsulates about that specific year um or years also yeah a, a staggering achievement 
all the Ferrante books I read I think two three and four or three and four this year either way the fourth book sort of galaxy brains that entire series out uh, I definitely want to make time to read all of those again uh, I sort of rationed them because I just got completely consumed as soon as I started one. I had to finish it. I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't write, couldn't sleep. Well, I had to sleep, but I tried not to. My brain was overboard in thinking about what was going on. Uh, it is just a staggering achievement again, that entire series. Perdido Street Station, fa my favorite fantasy read of the year. Grotesque, uh, ugly, yet filled with humanity. A city that resides within the carcass of a dead god, yet uh, has like a very surprisingly, well, it's a new weird book, so it's very hard to explain, but it is filled of like the human condition, even though many of them interrogate what being human is, because alongside the humans is a, a sort of like insect breed species of people that are have a lot to say about marginalization. Uh, kind of a conventional plot and a really good way, I think, entry point into uh, Mielville's work. Uh, Solaris, the definitive edition, I consume this on audio because it's like the best translation that you can get, I guess, of it. The other ones are not, I don't know, like approved by the author, but I think are still pretty good. But the audio experience was phenomenal uh, and the story was just incredible. It's one of the few classics of science fiction that I have tried and held up for me uh, this year. I tried a few other classics and they kind of sucked. Like the prose work was not great, the characterization wasn't great. Usually they come through on theme and that kind of blew people's minds at the time, but um, in retrospect they're not great in <laughs> some of those other things. So yeah, but this has all of it. Uh, like an in, in immense theme being communicated, uh, wild plot being uh, conveyed, excellent character work, excellent dialogue. It is like a supremely just excellent book. S, a novel about the Balkans, wildly, wildly good. Probably the most grotesque book I've read in relation to war. Uh, there's some really hard things to consume in that and it never allows the reader to sort of distance themselves from it, which is very unique to a war book because uh, it is both like first person but also shifts the perspective multiple times and makes it so raw and actual actually like visceral that it provokes some reaction in the reader um to and it's very like short it's kind of like a generally like masterpiece of uh plotting the themes are on point and some of it is based on actual interviews that the author did so it's just a really big achievement. The LA Quartet, when taken a, a macro perspective, I think that's where the quartet shines. The first one or two books are like really quite good, but uh, LA Confidential is a perfect novel, just perfect. Um, but then when you take the macro and you see how the alternate history of America, specifically LA, you get the larger themes, the immensity of the plot work that he has done, and how is he interrogating power dynamics, um, society in general, the human condition, and the absolute condemnation of those in power and what they have done under the cover of, you know, fiction. Really great stuff. The Prestige was a book that blew me out of the water. I had seen the movie, loved the movie, and worried that the book wouldn't stand up. The book is quite different. There's an additional like dual timeline thing happening, but uh, all that you love about the movie is present. And yet it is very like classic sci-fi. There's a singular theme being conveyed with its um, really intricate plotting and just phenomenal uh, sort of condemnation of both of these men being caught up in this revenge cycle against each other but then becomes transformative at the end with a, I don't know, twist or something, I guess you could say. And last, I want to talk about two nonfiction books, Ace, What Sexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex. Uh, as an Ace person, this 
left it was just a phenomenal book to read because uh, I think it's very accessible people who read it don't seem to be very confused even though it is a very confusing in some ways multifaceted identity and the way in which the author inserts herself as an ace person and has interviews with other people about their specific experiences yet delineates the very specific um, ways in which people can feel seen as an ace person and what is you know how valid every experience is was just uh, excellent way to be seen. The autobiography of Malcolm X, phenomenal nonfiction book, um, by far and away my favorite nonfiction of the year, and uh, it's just sort of brilliant how he interrogates his younger self to the older, and then especially knowing what we know about him now in history, and then having Lawrence Fishburne uh, speaking uh, in the narration of the story, Everything about it was immaculate, perfect, moving, and just an incredible experience. I'm very glad I did the audiobook, just because Fishburne just takes the role and just sort of... It's just a very transformative experience. Yeah, it's just perfect. <laughs> so that's the top 25 plus one. And uh, next will be the worst reads, uh, top movies, and my stats, as well as hopefully monthly wrap-ups for November and December. So stuff is coming. I hope that you enjoyed your reading year. Feel free to put your favorites uh, in the bottom or poke me to videos if I hadn't seen them already of your top 10 movies if you've got them out or top 10 books and movies. I'm, I'm interested in both. Nathan's Nook, uh, his top 10 movies was phenomenal movie or video that he made. He's getting very good at editing. Um, and otherwise, I will see you next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.